You think wine and tranquility. We think crushing footy. The Barossa Light and Gola Footy League. Yes, the Flow Friday Night Sports Show across our Flow Network in South Australia. We're about to talk Barossa Light and Gola Football, and I reckon our next guest, uh, Flow Man, will be up and about. Oh, I don't know. I reckon uh, the coach of the Williston Donnybrooks probably shirt fronted him uh, at last week's game, but for all the comments he's been making, Kim Vivian, are you alive? I am, yeah, yeah. Well, you look, you can't get in trouble for speaking truth, can you? Oh, oh, oh boy. Oh, I'll tell you what, you've got the uh, score on the board to speak it because 24 9, 153 to 13 10, 88. I bet there was a bit of um, uh, calling uh, across the oval and a bit of this and that on the sidelines, a few people in cars next door to each other, giving it to each other. But the uh, Centrals have got over Williston. Yeah, no, it was a it was a good result for the boys. It was probably um, it was definitely probably the last chance for our boys um, mm. uh, to give themselves an opportunity to have a crack at finals footy. So it was really a must win game, and the boys responded really well. Um, I must admit, I was a little bit surprised at the margin, but uh, now the boys boys come out and uh, and got the job done for Wheelow, which was uh, which was great and justified some of my ribbings I've been given Jars and the boys over the bridge. Well, I don't know what he said to him at quarter time, Jars, but uh, maybe he gave him some sleeping pills, uh, the Donnie Brooks boys, <laughs> because uh, they went into quarter time all tied up and then a nine goal to one blitz by the Tigers set this win up and they ended up going on to win comfortably, as you said. So, Searle booted five, Molyneux four, he's a star, Mercer three, Schultz three, Molyneux named best, Boaten and uh, Phelps and... Uh, Petro Hilius. Oh, you, that's, you did well there. Yep, he voted four. Uh, <laughs> Mackenzie, two, and he was named in the best. Both of them were. In fact, I'm not going to repeat it. Petro Hillis was in the best, Yeah, he? he was. Yeah, good on him. Yeah. Uh, so, Kim, a uh, very easy win in the end. Yeah, look, I don't think you can... Uh, look, geez, Charlie, well on you. If, you. if you don't keep him quiet, uh, he's... Uh, and I know he's a good central boy, but, gee, was, I said to someone a couple of weeks ago, he's the best country footballer I've seen, I reckon. Um Pure country footballer. He'd walk into any SANFL side still, I reckon. He's that good um, on his day. So uh, for him to kick four, I think he'd kick the first goal in the first couple of minutes, which sort of set the tone for his day. And you know, you've got the evergreen 38 or 39-year-old in um, uh, up full forward there. Really? Uh, Willie Searle and, and his young lad that's playing with him. So you, know, you don't see that too often in A-grade footy, a, a father-son combination, but Willie's still kicking five. No, oh. it is true. And I tell you what, um, the, we'll move on actually to the the battle of the unders. Uh, that is Kapanda versus Tananda, and it was uh, Kapanda at uh, their home deck that were too good for the Maggies. Eleven five seventy one eight six fifty four. Gee, was Tananda are up and down, but good on Ooh. Kapanda. That's a big win for them. Yeah, that's a cracking result. I was, um, you know, I was, I was excited for them when I read that Saturday night that they they'd got over the line and and reasonably comfortably too i think it's still a it's a really good win for him but yeah it's it's it's, gee, you, it's a tipster's nightmare it's an under isn't it yeah. one week to the next you just don't know what you're gonna get don't know what you're gonna get but you got ryan with four and mudge with two and stribley a couple for kapunda they knew what they got trembath and westoff got a couple apiece and justin westoff amongst the better players for tanunda but ryan hocking and dodd gee they're in good form they are a real finals capable side now kapunda as our south goal 1911 125 to nearly 6339 what a performance by south and i tell you i know it's hard for you to say it kim but I reckon that they are now just starting to move into premiership favouritism. Oh, look, I think they've been doing that for a couple of weeks, to be honest. Uh, I mean, that's it was it was probably trying, and and there were some wet conditions around in some of the Brosser venues. I reckon, and gee, that that margin uh, is quite telling. It's uh, what twelve thirteen goal margin over a, a side that I rate as being a good young side. So. Yeah, they're up and about south, and they're going to be hard to roll for the rest of this year, I think. It's true. Uh, that second quarter again, gee whiz, uh, the uh, goal sides didn't have, had some fun in the second didn't quarter, they? didn't they? Um, nine goals to zip, and well, that set this up. Uh, it was pretty even again at quarter time, but Whitwer booted six, Barch three, Whitwer, Arnold, Press, and Smith. That's the thing I've noticed about South Gawler. It's always different players in their <laughs> best players every week, so mm. they bat deep. Uh, for Nuri, it was Nichols, Bentley, Fullis and Norton named in their best, but we mm. saved the biggest upset till oh. last. What about this <laughs> result? Barossa District languishing down the bottom of the ladder. 
Didn't look like firing a shot for the rest of the season. Angerston have stopped to a crawl. It was the Bulldogs, 9-4-58. The Panthers, 7-10-52. What on earth is going on, Kim? Yeah, look, I, gee, that, I, I chuckled to myself when I looked at the results. Um, yeah, no, look, I don't think anyone expected Barossa to win another game apart from when they played Freeling. But, gee whiz, that's... Um, oh, look, I didn't just put a pencil line through Angerson. I've got a black texter and smudge them completely out. They are no chance at the moment of winning a winning a premiership from where they're going at the present. But, you know, sillier things and statements have been said and you know, there have been sides that have been able to turn it around. But gee, they've got got a lot of work to do. I know they've got a lot of injuries, but but gee, you still need to be able to have a bit of depth to um, to win those games because that could be a costly loss for them come the back end of the season. Sure will be. And I was driving home from the Mallee through Williamstown and I just stopped at the uh, corner there as you entered the town and the Oval at that hour of the night, about 8 o'clock, was still buzzing with a big crowd around. They were absolutely excited at the Bulldog uh, tent there with that big win. Hey, who kicks the goals uh, here for Barossa, uh, Jase? Uh, Ryswick booted four, trainer two, um, uh, McConnell... Gant and Ryswick named in their best. For Angerston, Tuckwell booted two. And uh, I'm not going to talk about the best players at Angerston because there weren't too many. No, there weren't. Uh, look, let's get into this uh, week's matches. Round 11, Freeling get Gola Central. A chance now for, uh, well, Willie Sir up front there to uh, really kick a big score. Molyneux to star because Freeling at home and not going to be any match, I don't think, for your Tiger outfit. No, you would hope that would be the case. Um, hope that the boys would consolidate. I know, uh, talking to Wheelo last night, he's taken a couple of under-17s players up to play A grade because we are we have another six injuries again. So um, I don't know whether it's an ageing list or what it is. Maybe it's just a no. We're not used to the uh, the long season coming on the back of a shortened COVID season. But look look out for this name, a, a young lad that's come to the club via his grandfather Wilbur Wilson in Kobe Wilson. Um, will actually debut. I believe he said he'll debut. Yes, he did. I think he may have just dropped out. He did. That's disappointing. Yep. Oh, no, he's there. There he is. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Kobe Wilson. Kobe Wilson is the name. Wilbur Wilson, our 91 Premiership coach. His grandson will be playing uh, for that one. Uh, and young Declan Whelan, as a 17-year-old, will be playing his first A-grade game. So that's a good challenge for them. And... Um, I think they'll still have enough depth there to uh, to get over the thrilling boys. All right, they well, certainly I will. So. Hey, Bulba Wilson, uh, Central District's absolute star, along with a bloke called Milky Peter Vivian, dad of Kim mm-hmm. at the same era. Uh, so Would have played along the Sally Saywells of the oh, world. Yes, yes, yeah. Grant Saywell. Yeah. There were some great names amongst that group of players. Kim, well, you could probably name the whole deck, couldn't you? Oh, I could probably almost name them and put the numbers alongside them. That's <laughs> how it was back in the day when you used to go to the footy every week. Oh, I bet you were proud to go and see your dad too. That would have been fantastic as a little kid. Yeah, look, it was good. It was always good times. And uh, as I say, you, you sort of got really involved in the footy because there was no electronics that could distract you from uh, doing what you were there to do. That's right. Good, good answer. Barossa District play, Newry. Who's going to get involved in the footy here? Are Newry going to be able to bounce back from last week or about Barossa on a roll? No, Newry too good. Definitely too good, Newry. Um, look, it's it's probably it's going to be wet, so it probably suits Barossa. It, it drags the game, packs it perhaps down to to the level that they like to play. They're good wet weather footballers, but I think Newry Newry will bounce back. They're going to be too strong tomorrow. Tanunda, and uh, they will host South Gawler, who are at the moment premiership favourites. So the Lions, there's no doubt about that. Uh, they should beat Tanunda. Yes, I think uh, I think. South Gawler, you would expect by five or six goals. Uh, well, having said that, you mentioned that it is at Tanunda, so you know the, the boggy conditions up there may make it a little bit harder for the fleet-footed brigade of South Gawler. But time will tell. I think they should still have have plenty of uh, you know reserves in the tank there that they'll uh, get over the line over Tanunda. All right, now Kapunda, they can venture down to the Donny Brooks Oval, and that is going to be a big chance for Jars to consolidate after a horrible week last week against the old foe. But Kapunda are coming, and i got a feeling that the Bombers are going to win it. Look, I hope Kapunda win, but <laughs> based on form so far this year, Jars would have given it to them. They're back at home on their home deck, and as I said, they can't win away from home, but they seem to do all right at home. So based on that, I'm going to tip Williston, but don't be surprised if Kapunda can get up. Well, uh, we will see how it all unfolds. Kim, anything else uh, before we wrap it up? 
No, I think that's all. If we can just get the rain to move away, dry the ovals out, and let's have a good weekend of BLNG football. Here, here. Uh, all the best, and we'll catch up with you next week, Kim. Thanks, guys. See ya.